Good morning. Welcome to another webinar from the guidance department entitled Cyberbullying and Cybercrime Prevention. So ako po si Ma'am Len Perez, the head of the guidance department from AICS Caloocan. So with me is Ma'am Gloria Enriquez or Ma'am Reng from AICS Torla and Ms. Jang Taule from AICS Taytay. Okay, so ano nga bang objective ng ating seminar? So number one is to ensure that all students are aware to signs and, and evidences of bullying. Number two, to reinforce the students and parents that no form of bullying is accepted and that the school is committed to address such behavior. And number three is to challenge students to rise to new levels of behavior in all in using all social media platforms. So at the end of the seminar, we hope na mas matututo po ang ating mga sudyante kung paano ba ang proper way ng paggamit ng social media. So alam naman natin sa, na since uh, for two years since pandemic, ay lagi po tayong online at talagang means of communication natin is through social media. So at the end of the seminar, for sure, lagi natin iisipin yung think before you click na sinasabi na. Okay, so ang ating first speaker is Ma'am Reng Enriquez from Tarla. So i-discuss niya po kung ano ba itong tinatawag natin cyberbullying at ano-ano ba yung mga types ng uh, cyberbullying. Okay, thank you Ma'am Reng. So good morning dear students ng Asian Institute of Computer Studies from senior high school to college students. Welcome to our guidance webinar. So, ang topic natin today ay, is about cyberbullying and cybercrime prevention. So, sobrang napapanahon nito ngayon kasi um, paggamit natin ng mga gadgets like cellphones, um, laptops, um, computers, tablets, or etc. ay sobrang in-demand ngayon sa ating pag-aaral, no? So, nang dahil sa distance learning modalities, so, ito na lang ngayon natin ang ating ginagamit. Lalong-lalo na ang social media apps, no? Dito na tayo nagpapas ng ating mga modules. So, ang guidance department, ang layunin nito, no? Maging aware kayo um, sa paggamit ng social media apps and yung mga pagta-text natin no ng mga bagay-bagay um, na hindi naman um naaangkop no sa mga issue lalong-lalo na sa ating mga kaklase mga estudyante so first um, alamin muna natin kung anong ibig sabihin ng cyberbullying so what is cyberbullying um, cyberbullying is bullying that takes place over digital devices like cell phones, computers, and tablets. So, ang cyberbullying, nagaganap ito sa paggamit natin ng cell phones, computers, and tablets sa, pamagi sa pamamagitan ng uh, pagsisend ng SMS, text, and apps or online in social media forums or gaming where people can view, participate in, or share content. So, it includes sending, posting, or sharing negative, harmful, false, or mean content about someone else. It can include sharing personal or private information about someone else causing embarrassment or humiliation. And cyber bullying crosses the line into unlawful or criminal behavior so um pagsisend natin ng nakakasakit or sharing negative um or yung mga private information lalong lalo na sa ating mga kaklase no hindi natin alam na nakakalabag na pala tayo or nagkakaroon na tayo ng um unlawful or criminal behavior. So, mag-ingat tayo. So, kailangan natin malaman kung ano yung mga dapat at hindi natin dapat gawin. The most common places where cyberbullying occurs are social media such as Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. Text messaging and messaging apps on mobile or 
tablet devices, instant messaging, direct messaging, and online chatting over the internet. Online forums, chat rooms, and message boards such as Reddit, email, and online gaming communities. Cyberbullying or cyber harassment is a form of bullying or harassment using electronic means. Cyberbullying and cyber harassment are also known as online bullying. It has become increasingly common, especially among teenagers, as the digital sphere has expanded and technology has advanced. So, um, karamihan ang mga nagiging biktima kayo mga teenager, kasi mostly kayo yung mga gumagamit ng mga social media app. So, cyberbullying is when someone typically a teenager bullies or harasses others on the internet and other digital spaces, particularly on social media sites. Harmful bullying behavior can include posting rumors, threats, sexual remarks, a victim's personal information, or pejorative labels. Example nito ay hate speech or other um, negative connotation. Um, bullying or harassment can be identified by repeated behavior and an intent to harm. Victims of cyberbullying may experience lower self-esteem, increased suicidal ideation, and various negative emotional responses, including being scared, frustrated, angry, or depressed. Kung nakakaranas kayo ng mga ganitong pangyayari, um, later on, no, malalaman ninyo kung sino yung mga pwede ninyong lapitan bukod sa inyong family. So, para maiwasan din natin ang mga di inaasahang pangyayari. So, kailangan din natin maging aware sa ating mga nararanasan, especially sa social media. So, meron tayo mga iba't ibang uri ng cyberbullying. So, 10 types of cyberbullying. Number 1, exclusion. No, is the act of leaving someone out deliberately. Exclusion exists within person bullying situations, but is also used online to target and bullying a victim. So, intentionally um, leaving someone out of a group, such as instant messaging, friend site, or other online groups activities. No example sa isang group message, intentionally, tinanggal siya ng sinasadya sa grupo na karamihan ng nasa um, group uh, message na to is ang kanilang mga kaibigan. And number two, no, harassment is a broad category under which many types of cyberbullying fall into but it generally refers to a sustained and constant pattern of hurtful or threatening online messages sent with intention of doing harm to someone. So, ito ay tuloy-tuloy at sinasadya na pangaapi na humahantong sa pangaabuso at nagbabantang mga text message or direct message sa social media. So, number three, outgoing or doxing. Outing, also known as doxing, refers to the act of openly revealing sensitive or personal information about someone without their consent for purposes of embarrassing or humiliating them. This can range from the spreading of personal photos or documents of public figures to sharing an individual safe personal messages in online private group. The key is the lack of consent from the victim. So, you outgoing, no? Ito ay isang kilos na hayagang pinapahiya ang isang tao o isang grupo sa pamamagitan ng online post na privado o nakakahiyang impormasyon na walang pahintulot sa biktima. So, yung number four, trickery, is similar to outing with an added element of deception. Now, in these situations, the bully will befriend their target and lull them into a false sense of security. Once the bull has gained their target's trust, 
the abuse that trust and share the victim's secrets and private information to a third party or multiple third parties. So, trickery. So, dito, kakaibiganin muna nila yung victim tapos kukunin yung tiwala. No? So, mag-ingat tayo dito kahit kaibigay mo na. Huwag mong ibibigay yung mga um, password ninyo sa social media. No? So, hindi natin alam yung mga um, mga pangyayari na, or mga pwedeng mangyayari in the future. So, be aware. So, number five, um, cyber stalking. Ano? Um, it is a particular serious from um, or is a particularly serious form of cyberbullying that can extend to threats of physical harm to the child being targeted. It can include monitoring, false accusations, threats, and is often accompanied by offline stalking. It is a criminal offense and can result in a restraining order, probation, and even jail time for the perpetrator. So, ito ang pinaka mapanganib na anyo ng cyberbullying, no? Kung saan binabantaan ang biktima sa pamamagitan ng email, social media apps, at instant message. Okay, number six, frapping, is when a bully uses your child's social networking accounts to post inappropriate content with their name. It can be harmless when friends write funny posts on each other's profiles but has potential to be incredibly incredibly harmful so ihahack ang account mo tapos magpapanggap siyang ikaw at ito ay magpo-post ng hindi naaangkop sa iyo o sa biktima so number 7 masquerading happens when a bully creates a maid a profile or identity online with the sole purpose of cyberbullying someone. This could involve creating a fake email account, fake social media profile, and selecting a new identity and photos to fool the victim. In these cases, the bully tends to someone the victim knows quite well. So, ito ay yung gumagawa ng mga fake accounts ng victim no tapos nagpo-post ng mga nakakahiya dun sa biktima no so kaya nga sinasabi ko sa inyo guys be aware no dun sa mga inyong mga uh, password or username na ginagamit niyo sa social media niyo no Ma hindi niyo alam especially no baka mahak or hindi nyo alam na yung mga taong pinagkakatiwalaan mo na binigay mo yung password mo eh pag nag-away kayo nyan, no? baka meron, intentionally meron siyang gawin hindi maganda sa'yo so number 8 dissing refers to the act of a bully spreading cruel information about their target through public posts or private messages to either ruin their reputation or relationships with other people. In these situations, the bully tends to have a personal relationship with the victim, either as an acquaintance or as a friend. So, this thing, pagpapadala o pagpo-post ng hindi na naaangkop na impormasyon tungkol sa biktima sa, on sa online upang sirain ang kanilang reputasyon at ang kanilang kaibigan. So, number nine, trolling is when a bully will seek out to intentionally upset others by posting inflammatory comments online. Trolling may not always be a form of cyberbullying, but it can use as a tro troll to cyberbully when done with malicious and harmful, harmful intent. These bullies tend to be more detached from their victims and do not have a personal relationship. So, ang trolling, togo ng isang tao sa pamamagitan ng paggamit ng kahihiyan sa social media. And number 10, flaming. 
This type of online bullying constitutes of posting about or directly sending insults and profanity to their target, flaming as a similar to trolling, but will usually be a more direct attack on a victim to incite them into online online fights. So, um, ito yung mga 10 types of cyberbullying na dapat maging aware kayo para um, hindi tayo um, makasakit or makagawa na nakakalabag sa ating batas. Um, cyber stalking. Ano? Um, it is a particular serious from um, or is a particularly serious form of cyberbullying that can extend to threats of physical harm to the child being targeted. It can include monitoring, false accusations, threats, and is often accompanied by offline stalking. It is a criminal offense and can result in a restraining order, probation, and even jail time for the perpetrator. So, ito ang pinaka mapanganib na anyo ng cyberbullying, no? Kung saan binabantaan ang biktima sa pamamagitan ng email, social media apps, at instant message. Okay, number six, frapping, is when a bully uses your child's social networking accounts to post inappropriate content with their name. It can be harmless when friends write funny posts on each other's profiles but has potential to be incredibly incredibly harmful so ihahack ang account mo tapos magpapanggap siyang ikaw at ito ay magpo-post ng hindi naaangkop sa iyo o sa biktima so number 7 masquerading happens when a bully creates a made a profile or identity online with the sole purpose of cyberbullying someone. This could involve creating a fake email account, fake social media profile, and selecting a new identity and photos to fool the victim. In these cases, the bully tends to someone the victim knows quite well. So, ito ay yung gumagawa ng mga fake accounts ng victim no tapos nagpo-post ng na mga nakakahiya dun sa biktima no so kaya nga sinasabi ko sa inyo guys be aware no dun sa mga inyong mga uh, password or username na ginagamit inyo sa social media niyo no Ma hindi niyo alam especially no baka mahak or hindi nyo alam na yung mga taong pinagkakatiwalaan mo na binigay mo yung password mo eh pag nag-away kayo nyan, no? baka meron, intentionally meron siyang gawing hindi maganda sa'yo so number 8 dissing refers to the act of a bully spreading cruel information about their target through public posts or private messages to either ruin their reputation or relationships with other people. In these situations, the bully tends to have a personal relationship with the victim, either as an acquaintance or as a friend. So, this thing, pagpapadala o pagpo-post ng hindi na naaangkop na impormasyon tungkol sa biktima sa, on sa online upang sirain ang kanilang reputasyon at ang kanilang kaibigan. So, number nine, trolling is when a bully will seek out to intentionally upset others by posting inflammatory comments online. Trolling may not always be a form of cyberbullying, but it can use as a tro troll to cyberbully when done with malicious and harmful, harmful intent. These bullies tend to be more detached from their victims and do not have a personal relationship. So, ang trolling, tugo ng isang tao sa pamamagitan ng paggamit ng kahihiyan sa social media. And number 10, flaming. 
This type of online bullying constitutes of posting about or directly sending insults and profanity to their target, flaming as a similar to trolling, but will usually be a more direct attack on a victim to incite them into online online fights. So, um, ito yung mga 10 types of cyberbullying na dapat maging aware kayo para um, hindi tayo um, makasakit or makagawa na nakakalabag sa ating batas. Para mas lalo pa tayo maging aware at malaman yung mga uh, magiging karapatan natin in the future na makaranas tayo ng mga ganitong pangyayari, narito yung ating um, cyberbullying laws. So, cyberbullying vying social media scene as crime. Picking on someone on Facebook may become a crime. A bill has been filed at the House of Representatives defining and penalizing cyberbullying or the act of posting rude, offensive, or insulting messages against the victim on the internet. By penalizing acts of cyberbullying, people are encouraged to become responsible netizens and make them accountable for their cyber actions. Cyberbullying acts of cruelty committed using internet or any form of electronic media or technology that has the effect of stripping one's dignity or causing reasonable fear or physical or emotional harm. Offensive acts include the following repeatedly sending offensive rude and insulting message, distributing derogatory information about the victim, posting or sending offensive photos of the victim, whether these are digitally altered or not, or were taken with or without consent with the intention to humiliate and embarrass the victim. Breaking into an email, social networking, or any electronic account and using the victim's virtual identity to send, upload, or distribute embarrassing materials to or about others, sharing the victim's inf into revealing personal information or any embarrassing information, or tricking the victim into revealing personal or embarrassing information and sharing it to others. Repeatedly sending messages that include threats of harm or engaging in online activities that cause fear on the victim's safety. So, ang advice ko lang sa inyo, um, sana yung mga personal or private information um, sa inyo is huwag na ninyong i-public. Mahirap ngayon. Sobrang lawak na ng um, social media. At napaka um, um, sobrang ano na ng technology natin ngayon. High tech. So, yun nga mga um, bank account no? na hack na um, yung pakayang mga personal um, information natin. So, ang ano ko lang, huwag na lang tayong magpo-post and i-limit natin yung pagpo-post natin ng mga mahalagang bagay na informasyon sa atin. So, sana no, nakatulong itong seminar na ito um, para magi mamulat lalo na kayong mga kabataan. No, huwag niyong hahayaan no na makaranas kayo na mga ganitong um, issue no or mga pangyayari um, kung kayo man ay um nahahalata niyo na na medyo meron ng lumalapit sa inyong suspicious na tao no umihingi sa inyo ng information or nakakaranas kayo ng harassment or mga um, pamamahiya through social media. So, ipagbigay alam nyo lang sa mga taong malalapit sa inyo para matugunan kung anong magandang action na gawin. So, magandang umaga sa inyo. 
No, maraming salamat sa inyong pagikinig. Okay, so thank you, Ma'am Len and Ma'am Reng. So what is bullying nga ba? So bullying is when one or more of the following things happen repeatedly to someone who finds it hard to stop it from happening. So it is when a person or a group of people offline man yan or online mangyari. So makinig kayo mabuti, baka nangyayari sa inyo to o kaya may kakilala kayo na uh, nakakaranas nito. So first is making fun or tease someone in mean and hurtful ways. Yeah. Yung tipong inaasar mo sila, yung simpleng pang-asar pala natin, akala natin, hindi sila apektado, yun pala, big din na sa kanila yon So, it is a kind of bullying na. Second is telling lies or spread nasty rumors about someone to try to make others not to like them. Ayan, yung tipong gagawan mo ng issue yung isang tao na yon para hindi siya magustuhan ng ibang tao. And ma-out of uh, zone siya, di ba? Third is to threaten or make someone feel afraid of getting hurt. Next is leave someone out on purpose or not to allow them to join in. So, uh, dinidisregard mo na makasama mo siya sa circle of friends mo o kaya sa typical na group, di ba? Next is hit, kick, or push someone around. So, physically, sinasaktan mo siya, nasasaktan mo siya. Yan. Next is post mean or nasty comments of pictures. About others on website uh, such as Facebook or send this to others mobile phone. So halimbawa yung typical na akala natin, pwede siyang gawing meme, yun pala, uh, nahihiya siya na makita yun ng ibang tao, then pinost mo sa social media. Diba? Next is deliberately damage, destroy, or steal someone's thing. Ayan. Yung typical na kinukuha mo yung gamit niya para sirain o kaya uh, paglaruan ng hindi niya alam kahit ayaw naman niya. Ayan. Next is to pretend to be someone else online. So, to hurt them or you're making, uh, uh, making them look like a foolish Ayan, person. And last one is send nasty or threatening messages using the internet or via mobile phone. So, on the other part, uh, pag-uusapan pa natin, palalawigin pa natin yung kaalaman natin when it comes to cyberbullying. So, here are the effects of cyberbullying on our country. So, online bullying remains prevalent in the Philippines unlike other countries. Cyber violence affect almost half of the Filipino children aged 13 to 17. So, according to some research, um, in Manila, in September 6, 2019, one in three young people in 30 countries said that they have been a victim of online bullying, with one in five saying they skipped school due to cyberbullying and violence. Nga. So, according to a new poll released today by UNICEF, the United Nations Organization Working for Children's Rights, that uh, in the Philippine sector, latest national data showing that cyber violence affect almost half of the children aged 13 to 17, that uh, yung prevalence of cyber violence for males, which is 44%, is almost the same for female, which is 43%. So, imagine the fact na uh, nagiging dahilan ng ating mga kabataan para sila ay tumigil or mag, uh, um, tumigil or mahirapan sa kanilang pag-aaral ay dahil sa pambubuli na kanilang nararanasan. Diba? So, please everyone, uh, wag na tayong maging rason para magkaroon ng uh, um, paghihirap yung ating uh, kaklase o kaya kakilala. Yan. Violence against children in all forms, including online bullying or cyberbullying, has devastating effect on the physical and emotional well-being of young people. Why? Kasi uh, let's accept the fact na ang mga kabataan ngayon talagang inline sila when it comes to the social media platforms. Himbawa, um, pala post sila na kanilang mga nararamdaman, ayan, Kaysa nga mag-share sila sa kanilang mga uh, kakilala o kaya ay uh, kasama sa bahay, mas gusto nila na nag-share sila ng kanilang uh, nararamdaman sa social media. But uh, dahil doon, siyempre nagkakaroon talaga ng, kasi 
ima- imagine, uh, ipopost mo yung nararamdaman mo. Let's accept the fact na hindi naman lahat na makakita, makakakabasa nung post na yon ay magugustuhan yon. May mga mangbabash talaga sa'yo that na dapat uh, aware ka and dapat handa ka. But then again, dahil nga syempre medyo bata pa yung nagpo-post nun, pag halimbawa um, nasalitaan sila ng masasakit na silita, bastos, o kaya um, medyo uh, uh, over uh, limitation ng kanilang kakayahan or pag-iisip, syempre nagkakaroon ng effect yun when it comes to emotional well-being ng mga kabataan. Diba? Kung baga, parang na, nangihinaan sila ng loob. Yan. O kaya naman, um, nakakarana sila ng mga threats. O kaya, um, anything. Yan. So, those can create lasting emotional and psychological scars. Imagine the fact, even physical harm. It is particularly challenging to address since children are vulnerable and have easy access to the internet, making them easy targets of online violence. So, UNICEF is calling for urgent action to implement policies that will protect children and young people from bullying. Online and offline man yan, addressing the problem requires action from all of us. Again, from all of us, hindi lamang po sa gobyerno, kundi lahat ng individual. Okay? Establishing and equipping national help uh, lines to support children and young people in reporting violence is a concrete step. So, training teachers, parents to respond to prevent bullying will ensure the safety of children and young people. So, particularly the most vulnerable ones. Um, katulad nga nung nabanggit natin kanina, syempre, uh, lahat ng individual dapat makatulong tayo na mabawasan or wag na tayong mag doon sa nang bubuli o uh, rason para tumigil o mahirapan ng isang kabataan. Okay, so gathering better uh, data about the online behavior of children and young people and how criminals are using the internet will guide uh, policies and action plans. Yeah. So yung step-by-step procedure kung paano natin matutulungan ang bawat kapataan, matuturuan natin sila. Yan. UNICEF is also urging the social media and social networking service companies to improve ethical standards and practices in collecting and managing information of children. Okay? Okay? So, bullying is often seen as a subcategory of peer ag- aggression. So, TKT are distinguished bullying from other kinds of aggression such as imbalance of power, repetition of duration, or negative actions, and deliberate will to hurt. So, in many countries, boys face more problems in school than girls do, at least where overall academic performance is concerned. So, and involvement in bullying. Yan. So, bakit nga ba? Bakit nga ba mas mataas ang percentage ng mga sa kalalakihan? Kasi normal o usual kasi sa standard ng uh, society natin na ang mga kalalakihan dapat uh, brusko sila minsan o kaya matapang sila, ba? Diba? So, hindi sila nagpapadaig kung kanino man yan. Kaya usual na nangyayari yung bullying sa mga kalalakihan. Sa mga kababaihan naman, yes, nagkakaroon din naman ng mga uh, pangyayari such as bullying. Pero hindi siya katulad ng pisikalan, katulad ng nasa kalalakihan. Okay? Majority of the youth mature successfully through adolescence without apparent long-term problems. So, it should be considered at risk due to the prevalence of risk behavior. Bakit? Actually, in all aspect, um, sa loob ng tahanan, dapat nagsisimula na maging maayos yung pakikisalamuhan natin sa ibang tao. Okay? So, kung may na- meron mga nakikinig na magulang na nandito, dapat po uh, tulungan natin yung ating mga anak na uh, marunong silang makisama sa ibang tao. ba? Diba? Kasi, syempre, kung ano man yung magiging uh, ugali ng isang bata ay siya din kadalasan nagiging uh, nakukuha niya din naman sa loob ng tahanan okay so big uh, 
responsible parent na matulungan natin yung ating mga anak sa paglaki, sa tamang paglaki. Ayan. Okay, as we go further, so here are the safety tips on cyberbullying on how to stop it. So don't respond, don't be a bully, be civil, safety evidence, be a friend and not a bystander, talk to a trusted adult, block the bully, and don't retaliate, okay? So when you're experiencing cyberbullying, it can sometimes feel like no one else understands it. And like there's nowhere to turn for help. But you're never alone in dealing with cyberbullying. If you're wondering how to deal with cyberbullying, then um, read on for our cyberbullying strategies. Okay? So here are our five strategies for dealing with cyberbullying. So first, don't respond immediately. So, the aim of a lot of cyberbullying is to annoy, upset, or confuse the person who is being targeted so that they react emotionally. So, if you're being cyberbullied, keep in mind that the person who's targeting you wants you to respond. So, yun nga, wag na natin pansinin sila, hayaan na lang natin sila kasi as long as hindi naman tayo nila um, ginagawa ng masama like uh, physical, ayan, Hayaan na lang natin uh, kasi yung mga bully na yan, as long as uh, pinapansin natin, mas lalo lang silang natutuwa. Ayan. So, a good strategy for dealing with this is not to give them what they're looking for. So, if someone says something to you online, tags you in a photo you don't like or just generally does something unkind, put down your phone for an hour or more. So, like that time to give yourself some emotional distance and think carefully before you respond. So, for example, may nagtag sa'yo, di ba may mga setting naman ng mga social media platforms. So, for example, Facebook. So, halimbawa may nagtag sa'yo, you can remove that particular tag naman eh. At kung halimbawa, yung person na yun ay paulit-ulit kang tinatag sa kung ano-anong uh, post. You can unfriend him or her na lang para uh, malesen yung interactions ninyo sa isa't isa. O kaya naman kung hanggat maaari, you can block him or her. Okay? So walang masama kung mababawasan ng mga toxic person or people ang iyong social media accounts. Okay? So, our second strategy is follow up when you're calmer. So, after an hour, you hopefully feel a little calmer. So, now you can go back online. If you feel up to it, maybe even with a friend or family member in the room with you. So, the idea at this stage is to get a proper feel for the situation before contacting that person who is cyberbullying you. So, using a calm, neutral language, try to work out the situation with the person without letting them get to you that they might not even realize that you interpret their action as cyberbullying. So, calm and conversation is a good place to start. Why? Kasi, um, kapag halimbawa nakaranas ka ng bullying, hanggat maaari, katulad na nabanggit natin kanina, um, wag na tayo mag-respond. Hanggat maaari. Diba? So, kung halimbawa talagang hindi natin maiiwasan, nagkakaroon kayo ng interaction, huwag mong gawin kung ano yung ginawa niya sa'yo. Hayaan mo lang siya. Uh, maging marespeto ka pa rin, maging kalmado ka pa rin sa makikipag-usap sa kanya, maging magalang ka pa rin. Kasi makikita at makikita naman niya yun at the end of the day na hindi worth it, eh, di ba? Hindi worth it na gawin na mag-bully, di ba? So, at that point, matutulungan mo rin siya na magbago. Okay. Okay, our third strategy is taking screenshots. So, here are the best way for you to report an instant cyberbullying. After all, the person who's cyberbullying you may delete their comment or photo when they realize that it could get them in trouble. So, screenshot mo na kasi wala na mo wala kung sakali man na, na maramdaman mo na you feel threatened or cyberbullied. Yan. Screenshot mo ha. Para merong kang proof, di ba? Merong kang evidence. So, it 
can ensure you always have a copy of what was said. So note that if you take a screenshot on Snapchat, the other person will be notified that you did so. Actually, Meron nga yung trend uh, when it comes to messenger nga, di ba? Nakabag daw nag-screenshot, eh makikita ng other person. But if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, hindi naman yan totoo. Okay? So our fourth strategy is to try to stop frequently checking posts. So when you're in the thick of a cyberbullying attack, you can feel like the person who is cyberbullying you is literally in the room with you. So shouting things in your ear and demanding your attention. So, uh, syempre, mas maaalala mo yung mga uh, pambumbuli na ginagawa sa'yo kapag uh, present pa yung nangyari, di ba? And at the same time, uh, kapag check ka ng check ng iyong uh, social media accounts, Uh, kung sakali man na hindi pa natatanggal yung post na yon, syempre maaalala at makikita mo, di ba? So, masasaktad ka rin lang emotionally, di ba? So, katulad nga nung ating first strategy kanina, don't respond na lang. Hayaan na lang natin sila kasi yung mga bully nga na yan, kapag nagbigay tayo ng attention sa kanila, mas nagugustuhan nila yun, di ba? But again, it doesn't mean that It have to be that way. You can always limit your social media time. Um, maybe some few hours or a day or whatever feels right for you. So that way, the bullying doesn't feel constant and you can take a break from the online world to look after yourself. Um, siguro kung may ganitong scenario, para malesen yung pagsosocial media mo, um, maybe mag-aral ka, di ba? Magbasa ka ng mga libro. O kaya naman, kung sakaling hindi mo maiiwasan na gumamit ng phone, magbasa ka ng mga um, articles, di ba? Mga ganong bagay. So, our last strategy for today is report and block. So, most social media f- sites want to help you feel safe online. So, they don't want you to experience cyberbullying either. So, they have a lot of built-in tools to keep you safe. such as report um pipili an mo pa mga yun eh di ba kung ano yung nararamdaman mo kaya ano yung ginawa nila di ba if you exhausted the reporting and blocking options within your social media platforms and things are still really bad you can make a report to the e safety commissioner so by filing out this form before you make a complaint you need to have a copy of your bullying materials ready to upload so yun nga yung mga evidence na gather mo uh, such as screenshots or photos report the material to the social media service so if possible it at least 48 hours before filing out the form okay ano pa um gather as much information as possible about where the materials is located And, syempre, allow 15 to 20 minutes to complete the form. So, hanggat maaari kung talagang hindi na makaya or uh, feel threatened na talaga, you can report and block that person or people. Okay? So, be safe, everyone. Um, I hope na nakatulong itong mga safety strategies sa inyo. So, thank you. Tips to prevent cyberbullying. Method one is protecting your your privacy online. Don't post anything online you want to keep private. So alam naman po natin na kapag nagpost tayo ng mga pictures, messages, ay hindi na hindi po natin yan agad-agad mabubura. Kasi yung iba, ini-screenshot na yan. So uh, dyan, dyan na po na, nagsisimula yung mga tinatawag natin na pang Especially kung meron tayo na post na medyo picture natin na hindi maganda, yung ating itsura, ganyan. So, yun na po, doon na po siya nagsisimula. So, kung tayo magpo-post ng, ng anything na sa tingin natin na uh, magtatawanan tayo or hindi maganda, ayan po. So, once, uh, once they're out there, a bully could get hold of a copy and use it to harm you. Lagi po natin yung isipin. And is, it is best not to post anything inappropriate or embarrassing or overly personal online. Ayan. So number two,
make use make use of privacy setting on social media. So like for example sa Facebook, meron naman po yung privacy setting. So pwede po natin yung i-explore para at least may mga kung sino lang yung gusto natin mag-view ng ating mga mga pictures ma gusto ba natin siya ay only with friends or friends of friends or uh, kasi pag nilagay natin yun na uh, uh, kumbaga mabuview ng everyone talagang everyone ma- makakabisit po dun sa ating uh, account so siguro mas maganda kung uh, keep that private na lang po okay And then what else? Limit your online friends. So, mas maganda. Kasi nakikita ko sa mga estudyante ngayon, parang paramihan sila ng friends. Tama ba? Ayan. So, mas maganda sana kung ililimit lang natin doon sa mga friends or uh, talagang kakilala natin siya. So, uh, ako nga like, like for example sa sarili ko, yung mga friends ko, estudyante or kamag-anak. So talagang identify ko sila kung sino sila, kung, kung bakit ko sila nakilala. Kasi mahirap kung may friend tayo tapos pag tinanong kung sino yan, hindi ko alam. Inaccept, in, inad lang ako, inaccept ko lang. So parang mahirap ma, kung baga makontrol kung meron tayong mga napupost online na hindi maganda. So mas maganda sana kung ilimit natin yung pag accept accept ng mga friends natin na hindi naman natin kilala. Okay. What else? Protect your password. Nako, napaka-importante po nito na yung password natin ay tayo lang ang may alam. So, huwag natin si-share kung kanikanino. So, meron na pong uh, mga instance na babalitaan yung mga mag-girlfriend, boyfriend. Di ba alam yung mga, pa- mga password? Tama ba? So, siguro para um, more private na kahit pa parang may, may privacy tayo. Siguro sa atin na lang, di ba? Kasi minsan, di ba, may mga napopost tayo na hindi naman kailangan na sinishare pa. Kaya, yun, mas maganda kung kayo lang yung nakakalag ng password mo. And siguro, huwag natin i- parang madaling hulaan, pangalan nyo lang, birthday nyo. So siguro, ano, mag-isip tayo ng password na talagang, ano, uh, mapoprotect yung ating mga account. Ayan. What else? Limit access to your device and accounts. So huwag natin basta-basta ipapagamit yung mga laptop natin or PC natin or yung mga cellphone natin sa so, kung kanilin na lang. Especially kung nakabukas yung ating mga accounts sa Facebook and yung mga iba pang account natin like Instagram or yung mga TikTok account natin. Kasi baka kung ano-ano din yung may mga, may mga bully na friend talaga na kung ano-ano lang yung pinopost. So, minsan na-experience ko na rin to. Nagkakatuwaan. Uh, pinost, pinost doon nung, nung, nung classmate niya. Bakla ako. <laughs> so parang, parang lahat na nagtawanan, nag-comment. So siguro uh, para malimit 'yon, kailangan kayo lang yung mag- may access sa sa account niyo or sa device niyo. And mas maganda kung magla-log out tayo after usage. Ayun. Method to dealing with bullies. So number one, siguro mas maganda ignore na lang, 'di ba? Ignore the bully if possible. So bullies strive on making people upset. Ayun yung number one nilang objective, yung inisin ka to make you annoyed, di ba? So if you can ignore them, they won't get dissatisfaction, di ba? So hanggat hindi ka naiinis, hindi ka nila titigilan. Nga. So this should be your first line of de- defense and will prevent many cases of cyberbullying. Ignore the bully only if it's, it's at the first time and mild comment or action online. So if the bully's action are repeated or severe, doon ka nalang mag-respond. So may mga proper way para mag-respond sa mga bully. Okay. Resist the urge to fire back. So, wag natin agad iisipin na gusto natin gumante. Okay. If someone says something cruel online, it's tempting to say something mean about them. Okay. Yun agad yung kumbaga, first reaction natin. Eh. So, trying to get even rare, rarely works with a cyberbully. However, trolls feed on people getting upset at their harassing comments and post online. Don't give them that satisfaction. Sabi nga natin kanina, aim lang nila ay talagang magpagalitin ka. So, pag nagalit ka, di ba, mag nag-fire back agad or gumanti ka agad, medyo magkakaroon lalo ng mas malaking problema. Okay. Else, block whoever is harass, harassing you. So, meron ka namang power to block people. So, madali lang yan. Isang click lang yan. Pwede mo na siyang i-block. Hindi ka na, na, hindi ka na niya maharas or hindi ka na mahabasa na anything na ipopost niya or i-comment niya. And talagang hindi ka na niya makikita. Tama? Okay. So, asa sa'yo yun. Choice mo yun. Kung talagang gusto mo na matigil yun. Yung pang-haras niya sa'yo. Okay. Okay. 
Number three is taking a stand against cyberbullying. Okay, so ano-ano ba yung uh, mga dapat nating gawin? So help others who are bullied. So, siguro kung meron kayong classmates or friends na sa tingin natin na nabubuli na siya online, di ba? So try to help them. So make connections with them. So pa paano ba yan, di ba? So offer encouraging messages. So pwede natin palakasin yung loob niya, di ba? Kung ano yung mga dapat niyang gawin. Mag-suggest tayo, di ba? Be open about how you don't support or accept bullying. So sabihin mo yung point of view mo na uh, ano ba yung pwedeng gawin sa mga taong ganito. So in that way, di ba, ma-feel niya na meron sa kanya nakikinig at meron sa kanya dumadamay. Okay. So number two, don't support inappropriate content. So minsan kasi pag may nakita lang tayo social media, hinahard natin, nilalike natin, sinishare natin, di ba? Without, kung ba evaluating, ano ba tong content na to? Okay ba to? Maganda ba to? Nakakatulong ba siya? Di ba? So kailangan din, di ba, tayong share ng share na lang. So basahin din natin. So pag sinishare ba natin to, ano yung magiging tingin sa atin ng tao? Di ba? Minsan may mga, mga ano, di ba, may mga memes na hindi maganda, pero sinishare pa rin natin. Kasi parang uso siya, trending siya. So isipin muna natin ano magiging effect nito pag sinyer natin yun. Okay. What else? Spread positivity. Ito talaga yung lagi, especially sa panahon ng pandemic. Kailangan-kailangan natin to. So uh, instead of sharing ng mga inappropriate content, why share na lang yung mga quotes na Diba, mabubus yung ano natin, yung mga positivity natin, di ba? So, kumbaga, uh, makakatulong para kumbaga ma 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 survive or uh, malimutan natin yung mga problema natin sa buhay, especially yung itong pandemic, di ba? So, mag-isip tayo or maghanap tayo ng mga quotes na pwede nating i-share about living, about loving, di ba? Ayan, marami yan sa social media. Be part of the solution, not the problem. So la lagi niyan uh, sa buhay natin dapat di ba lagi tayong iisipin natin kung paano tayo magiging part ng solution hindi pa kakadagdag sa problema pa. So yung mga minsan mga sol 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 di ba uh, kumbaga ito yung sinabi niya sa iyo ito yung sabihin mo. Kailangan gamanti ka. Kailangan uh, kumbaga wag kang papayag na ito yung sinasabi. Kailangan ito yung ipost mo di ba para makaganti ka sa kanya. Siguro as a friend sabi nga din kanina uh, una natin yung sabihin sa friend natin. Pag-encourage natin siya uh, in a positive way. Huwag yung uh, gaganti pa kasi lalaki pa yung problema. Okay. Ano, uh, what else? Taking a stand against cyberbullying. Mobilize your community community to combat cyberbullying. So siguro kung meron kayong mga group chat, meron kayong mga classmates doon na medyo natingin nyo ay uh, kumbaga nasa cyberbullying na sa mga iba nyong classmate. So siguro ano, uh, pwede nyong pag-usapan nyo sa mga group chats nyo na itigil na kasi hindi healthy. And then also, kailangan makikinig tayo sa mga friends na sa mga adults like yung parents natin or advisors natin or guidance counselors natin. Diba? Kung paano ba, ano, kung paano gumamit ng social media talaga. So like itong seminar na ito, uh, sa tingin ko, sa dami na narinig natin from first speaker, second, hanggang ngayon, ay kami natutunan tayo kung paano yung proper way ng paggamit. And kumbaga, um, kung hindi natin mapipigilan, meron namang tutulong sa atin or handang tumulong sa atin. So like your family, di ba, andyan sila, pwede natin tayo magsapin. Minsan kasi nililihim natin, di ba, Nasa, nabubuli na pala tayo online pero hindi natin, hindi natin sinasabi sa parents natin. So mas maganda alam nila yon, di ba, katulong sila para matigil lahat yon. And your school, di ba, yung guidance, mga guidance counselor natin, pwede natin sa kanilang i-report. So sabi nga kanina nung ating mga speaker, di ba, so kailangan may mga screenshot tayo kung sa tingin natin na bullying na yung ginagawa ng mga classmates or friends natin. Di ba, pwede tayo mag-screenshot as evidence. So pwede natin ipakita yun sa school, sa guidance counselor natin para makatulong sa investigation. And then kung worse is to worse, talagang malala na yung problema. May mga proper authority tayo uh, para tumulong sa atin. Nandiyan yung ano, uh, mga police na talaga. Kung talagang sobrang lala na nung sitwasyon na talagang tingin natin na nakaharas na tayo. Ayan. So ayan po ang ating topics for today. So we hope na mayroon po tayong natutunan. Uh, lagi nating iisipin na
na ito, think before you click. Huwag tayo basta-basta click ng click. Isip muna. Okay? Ayan. So, thank you and have a nice day.